Section 8.1 on parabolas, the next portion of our notes is going to look at how we use completing the square when we're trying to investigate the different pieces of the parabola. Starting with letter A, we have x squared minus 8x minus y plus 18 equals 0. When I look at that equation, I can tell that the x value is squared and there is no y squared. So as we saw in our previous video, I know that this is a parabola because there's only one squared term. So it couldn't possibly be any of the other conic sections. If the x is squared, it's going to look like the first version of our standard form of the parabola, y equals 1 over 4p times x squared. Now that means that there's only one squared portion, the x squared. There is no perfect square on the y. So when we talk about needing to use completing the square, what that tells us is I'm really only completing the square once, on the squared term. So previously when we did completing the square we said we'll put all of the x's together and then we moved the constant over to the other side meaning move the 18 over. In this case with the parabolas in addition to moving the 18 over I'm also going to move the y because I don't need to use the y as I complete the square. I am only completing the square on the x's. So I'm going to add y to the other side and I'm also going to subtract 18. Once I've done that I'm going to go ahead and complete the square as we normally do. So I'm going to take half of that negative 8. That's going to give me a negative 4. That whole quantity is going to be squared. Square the 4 that's on the inside. That means that I'm going to be adding 16 to the left. Likewise I will add 16 to the right and that's going to give me y minus 2 over here on the right hand side. Now by looking at that I can tell that my vertex of this parabola is going to be at 4, 2. Um, and so this example doesn't ask me for specific things, but just to make sure I can find everything that I'm looking for, my vertex is going to be at 4, 2. And then, wait, where would the focus be? What is that p value? Well, remember it was 1 over 4p, but in front of the squared term. Well, right now in front of the squared term, I don't see anything. So it's equivalent to having the number one there. So as we're trying to find the value of P, this would mean one over four P times X squared is equal to the Y value. So we had our adjustments because our vertex wasn't at zero, zero, it's at four, two. And then the one is what's going to help us figure out the P value. 1 is equal to 1 over 4p. Uh, 4p is equal to 1, or in other words, p is equal to 1 fourth. And again, this question doesn't ask me to do anything with that. I just wanted to make sure that we would notice, since I don't see anything written in front of there, it doesn't mean that there's nothing in front of there. That's meaning the number 1, and then we use that value of 1 to figure out the p-value using this equation in green, 1 equals 1 over 4p. Second example that we'll look at, letter b, y squared minus 2y minus 12x plus 13 equals 0. This time I'm seeing the y squared and no other x squared, so I can tell that it's a parabola. And using the y squared, we're going to be using that second equation. That means that it's going to be opening to the side, either to the right or to the left. Similar to what we did in the previous example, we're going to keep the y squareds on one side. And in addition to moving over the constant that we don't need, like we have done in all the other conic sections, I'm also going to move over the 12x. I'm going to add that over to the other side because I don't need that as I'm completing the square either. Then we'll complete the square on the left-hand side. We're going to take half of that. That's going to give me a y minus 1. Square, it means that I'm adding one to this side. That means I'm going to add one to the other side as well, leaving us with 12x minus 12. Now, at this point, I would offer a word of caution. Sometimes people like to say that the vertex is at 12, 1, using 12 for my x value there. But notice in our format, in this conic section much like the rest of them, we always completed the square and we had that 1 in front of the y or the 1 in front of the x. And this still has a 12 over here on the right hand side. So what we also need to make sure to do is we're going to factor a 12 out of the right hand side 
and that's going to leave me with x minus 1. Now you can tell that the vertex is going to be at positive 1 for the x and also positive 1 for the y. One additional thing to note for this example when you're trying to find the value of p, remember that the 1 over 4p is in front of the squared term. That coefficient would be in front of the squared term in the format that we're using. And so that means right now this coefficient is not in front of the squared term. And so in order to determine that, we're going to divide the 12 over to the other side. I'm going to have 1 12th y minus 1 squared equals x minus 1. Now it's in the format as we've been writing the other problems. We have 1, 1 for our vertex, and in this case, by looking at it, I can tell that that p-value is going to be equal to 3.